Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. Let's take a look at what's in the news this week. Obviously, the election is over. So what do you call this victory? In 2004, George W. Bush won a narrow Electoral College win with about 51% of the popular vote. Many corporate media outlets at the time called that a mandate. That's not a term with any precise meaning, which in a way makes it more interesting to see how it's used. Clear mandate will boost Bush's authority reach, read a USA Today headline back then. On NPR, Rene Montaigne said, by any definition, I think you could call this a mandate. Which brings us to this week. Barack Obama racked up a big electoral college advantage and around a 50 to 48 edge in the popular vote. What do you call that? For a lot of people in the corporate media, it's definitely not a mandate. On CBS, Bob Schieffer said, in the hard world of American politics, the president did not get a mandate yesterday. CNN pundit David Gergen said Obama would have gotten a mandate if he had won the first debate. A headline at the NPR website read, for Obama, vindication, but not a mandate. And the Washington Post's Dan Balls called it an uncertain mandate. That wasn't the only lesson from the election. On NPR's Morning Edition, Koki Roberts explained the task for Obama this way. But uh, it is a divide where he's lost whites, he's lost Southerners, uh, he's lost the people of a certain income and age, and he's really got to do something fast to deal with that. Well, that's a strange political lesson. The winner's first task is to do something to please the people who didn't vote for him. Here's a quick thought experiment. Had Mitt Romney won, but without majorities of people of color or poor people, would Cokie Roberts be lecturing him about the need to reach out to those groups? Well, now that it's all over, it's clear that one of the saddest phenomena of election coverage was the revelation that corporate journalists really don't understand what fact-checking it is. To them, the job isn't about pointing out the gap between candidates' claims and reality, no. The main task is to prove their own neutrality by suggesting, no matter what reality says, that both major party contenders are being misleading in more or less equal measure. That's the lesson of the final Washington Post fact-checker piece from Glenn Kessler. True to form, it was not a list of the most glaring or harmful falsehoods, but a catalog of various themes like worst math skills or silliest blooper, with one example drawn from both parties. Kessler gave a bipartisan award for the Republican lie that Obama was going to junk work requirements for welfare. How exactly was that lie bipartisan? Kessler said something about how the Democratic counterspin didn't explain why the White House was changing the rules. The idea that political lying was equally balanced between the major parties could be seen in PolitiFact's final fact check too, with three examples drawn from each side. The problem with this is really very simple. The level and intensity of Republican misinformation was not matched by the Democratic Party. Corporate media fact checks that don't tell you that need a reality check. And finally, speaking of reality, after the Hurricane Sandy superstorm ravaged the East Coast, many may have thought, well, now it's time to talk about climate change. But they only needed to turn on the Sunday chat shows on November 4th to find out that they were wrong. NBC's Meet the Press host David Gregory opened the show with this. What more should the federal government do to get life back to normal in the storm zone? And should more attention be paid to a changing climate's impact on the severity of these storms? Well, given that that was the only mention of climate change on the program, the answer quite clearly was no. For the pundits and reporters on these high-profile shows, the disaster wasn't really something that happened to people. It was something that happened to the presidential election. Bad policy and corporate influence over our politics makes it very difficult to do anything about climate change. And bad corporate media makes it difficult to even talk about it. I'm Peter Hart, and this was FAIR TV.